Hi, everybody. I'm Chicago's very own Mel Dore, the Aloha Shirt Psychic, and I have Arthur Ease Your Mind with me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, so what's going on? Not too much. Actually, it was funny. On We had a little minor earthquake on Saturday. I was doing a reading on Zoom, and I'm looking at the chandelier in my in my in my dining room going this way and the girl's like what, what's wrong i said we just had an earthquake but you know this thing's bolted to the wall so it's, i'm not gonna have to worry about it but then we had windstorms on sunday and i had to go around the neighborhood looking for my patio furniture covers <laughs> they all blew away on the next county right well it's a nice way to get to know your neighbors Hey, that would be a good idea for a shake and bake commercial. Just be in your kitchen in California when an earthquake is going on and you put the kit, you put the chicken in the bag and just hold still. Yeah. Right. It wasn't that bad. It was, it was barely noticeable, but it's when I saw the chandelier moving that I knew we had had something. I would have been like. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Anyway. So good. And you, how about you? Get, like this. Well, you know, they said from Chicago, from the south side to the north side, one one area is going to get like one to three inches, one area is going to get up to 12 inches and whatever. And, you know, Chicago's so big, it kind of runs almost from northern Indiana to southern Wisconsin. Chicago's huge. Well, with suburbs, anyway. But where we're at, um, I don't even think, it's, it was supposed to start raining last night and snow today, but it didn't start snowing till this afternoon, but the mm. temperature was like um, 36 or something, 35, and so it was slush, Ooh. and I don't even think we've got two or three inches out there. For us, that's nothing. I mean, that's nothing. Right. Well, I just <laughs> live in Indianapolis, and when they had a snow day, you had drifts this high. As Linda Grindle would say, it's a nothing burger. Yeah, I think we're right. I think I'm getting a sty on my eye, so you have to forgive me. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh well, whatever. I'll just put some hot compresses on and call it a day. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. I'm excited. We've got some questions, but there are a few things I do want to talk about before we get to the questions. Um, number one, I've got openings on my Rhine River tour. All right, but uh, I've got openings on my tour going to Africa on June the 20th. I think I've got room for about four of my little blah. <laughs> I've got room for a ruru. I've got room for about four or five more people on the Africa tour. I can only take 20. So if you're interested, uh, call my office 847 590 5411. Again, 847-590-5411 is going to be an amazing trip. And then for the Rhine River, uh, I think I've got 43, 44, 45 people going on that trip. But uh, there's some more openings. The uh, tour operator called me today and said that they still have a few openings. So if you're interested, come with us. You'll have a ball. Africa is going to be incredible because we're going to be there during the wildebeest migration. Wow. And there's a hot, uh, optional hot air balloon ride over this over the Serengeti, I think, to see the wildebeest. It's going to be cool. So uh, I'm excited. <laughs> so that's going to be an incredible trip. One day we'll go into this humongous caldera on, on a volcano. And a lot of wildlife lives in that caldera, and especially the endangered rhinos, the black mm -hmm. rhinos. So we'll get to see them. Uh, one of the places we're going to stay, giraffes just come right into the camp. It's supposed to be incredible. So mm. it's going to be an amazing trip. <laughs> so everybody. I should have brought you the Jungle Book for your birthday. There you go. There you go. Well, you got me the Oz book thing. That was cool. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's my favorite movie of all time, The Wizard of Oz. Um, anyway, so having said the infomercial, that's out of the way. Um, I want to talk about and see what you feel about it. And I'm sure it's a question people are asking today about this whole Trump immunity thing in court. Mm -hmm. And I just want to preface it by saying, in a way, I'm kind of glad that the Supreme Court didn't hear the immunity case because they wanted to go through the lower courts. Mm -hmm. So it's it's unusual for me to agree with this Supreme Court, at least with six of them. <laughs> with their thinking, but I do agree with the, the fact that they didn't hear it right now because they wanted to go through the law. They wanted to go through the lower courts. Mm -hmm. 
intuitively my light bulb went on my psychic light bulb and said the reason that they probably did that is because if it went through all the lower appeals courts and if those courts said he's got absolutely no claim whatsoever for immunity then they can refuse to hear it and <laughs> saves themselves so that's why i see they did that um i i predict psychically my guides tell me that his immunity claim not going to hold water. His argument was ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. And you know, it's funny, back in 1977, Richard Nixon did the same thing. He said, well, you know, if a president does something wrong or breaks the law, it's okay because that person is and was a president and they're immune. But the courts never heard it because uh, Gerald Ford pardoned him. But right. that brings up a question, how can you pardon somebody for something they haven't been convicted of? <laughs> Is there a such thing? So I don't think, I intuit that the uh, that the immunity thing is, it's, it's, it's not going to hold up. He, the, he's not immune from the law. Um, you know, and then Trump said this one, grab this. Um, well, if uh, how did he how did he say it? If 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 I if I'm not immune, then nor, no, neither is Biden. Well, okay, right. That's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> but Biden hasn't done anything. <laughs> That's the whole point. But you know, um, now the House, some of those magas in the House are talking about impeaching Biden, but yet they're saying that Trump is immune. Well, then, if that's the case, shouldn't Biden be? <laughs> but Biden exactly. didn't do anything. <laughs> so their, their arguments are just ridiculous. But what I do it that Trump is going to be held responsible. So what do you think? That's did, you hear off my any, the arg did you hear any of the arguments? It was ludicrous. Ludicrous. I was like, what? When his lawyer said the only way you can convict pre or take president to court is if they were impeached and then convicted. Right. And the judge said, well, so if he murders people and he's not impeached and is not convicted, so he can murder people. And, and the lawyer couldn't answer it. He just said, well, well it, 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 was, it was ludicrous. Number one. Number two, I agree with you 100% that they needed to hear it first. But I also feel that Jack Smith, who, you know, pulled his hand pulled their hand because he gave it both to them and to the supreme court at the same time so they had they knew they had to move on it i think jack smith knew that the supreme court would knock it back down to the lower courts you know right. i think a jew said or somebody said he's playing multi-dimensional chess and he's mm -hmm. winning, and he will win because he's much smarter than you know he's brilliant and he knows what he's doing. So when the Supreme Court said at first they they would knock it back down to the lower courts and see what they said, people thought that was a win for Trump. But I thought no, no, it's, it was a loss. It was a loss a win for Jack Smith. It's a big loss. Yeah. And you know Trump showed up, and now he's saying, "Oh, I, I can't be on the I can't do his imitation, but I can't be on the campaign trail because I had to show up in court." He did not have to show up in court today. No, he didn't. Essentially, you know. I I intuit, anyway, my psychic light bulb said the only reason he showed up at the appeal is to use it to gain attention. Right. It's a political showing for him, and he's going to use it to raise money. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what I see. What yep. about you? What do you think? It's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all theater of the absurd. No. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's... But also... He's. I said something on my show last night about Trump and Biden. That Biden said that Trump says Biden's crazy. That Biden's a thief. That Biden's this. Biden's that. And it's all things that Trump Trump is. Trump always does that. So yeah. I said <laughs> they should get the song. Nobody does it better. <laughs> or anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> anything Trump <laughs> accuses, whenever it's all Trump is caught doing something. He accuses other people of doing the same things that he did. Yes. Uh, so that's why we know what he's up to. Well, if I were president, she'd be in jail. Oh. 
or you know he he blamed Obama for everything when he was in office. Now he's blaming Biden for everything. You know he he always is going to find a scapegoat. Always. Well, probably because if he did something wrong, Daddy found a scapegoat for him and paid them off. Correct. But you know he looks terrible. He's more orange than ever. I mean, I mean, I wonder if he puts orange dye on his skin or something because. You know, I I call him Cheeto Head, but you know, I'm gonna call him the carrot because he looks just like orange. Oh, he looks there's an episode of Lost in Space where they're being chased by a big carrot. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Some of that stuff got way like, crazy, but I remember that. That yeah, that's what he looks like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny now. Oh, Trump says. I would free the the January the six hostages, right? And now, like other Republicans are using the same rhetoric. Not that they're con convicts, they're hostages. Especially Elise Stefanik, right, or whatever her name is, mm. she's saying the same thing. But you know what? I intuit she's going to be brought down as well. She's going to be in trouble. <laughs> well, you heard about Marjorie Taylor Greene, my tragic girlfriend, that she was going to do a book signing in Florida on the sixth. And it was supposed to be a big party for to celebrate January 6th. And when they found out that it was not a book signing per se, but it was more of a fundraiser for January 6th people and to celebrate it, they canceled it. Because when I, I was talking to a, a Trumper, unfortunately, and she started saying, yeah, but January 6th, I said, yes, we'll celebrate January 6th, the day that people got murdered. Yeah, hello. You know, the day that people crapped on the walls in in the house. OK, nice. The day that Trump tried to overturn the government, you know, if Democrat president had done what Trump did. Oh, my God. They would have been yelling to get it through the courts already. You know, Trump just knows that, you know, all of this stalling and everything is a legal tactic because he knows, you know, that he thinks that it, he knows how slow the courts move. And he thinks that's going to be on his side because if he wins, that he could pardon himself and all that. It's, it's going to blow up on his face. Well, maybe with Judge Cannon in Florida, but I have been predicting she's not going to be the final judge on this either. Mm -mm, I don't think so either. I mean, she's done as far as her judgeship is concerned. Even if she threw out the case, still Jack Smith and still Georgia and other places too will follow suit. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Georgia's August 8th, I think, they, is the date they proposed, March 4th. I still see March 4th being the date for the D.C. court. I don't see it being delayed. I think they probably wanted to get it done in D.C. before they did it in Georgia. Because when she was saying they'd have it in November, I'm thinking, no way. No. But isn't Meadows still trying to get his case in federal, to go to federal it's, court? But it's he's still not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. happen. And, and also... He has in March is an interesting calendar for him because on the 25th, he has the Stormy Daniels thing in New York. Going to lose, by the way. I am. Oh, yeah. And you do know he tried to get the judge recused because he donated $15 to the Biden campaign. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's not going to work. Petty. That's not going to work. No, he didn't. It didn't happen. But I'm just saying he tried. Oh, they'll try anything. Yeah. Yet he tries to get a judge recused because of fifteen dollars, but look at how much the money he got from foreign governments, and how it's coming out now. But it will come out through whistleblowers and things like that about how he used the second and third party to to give those governments secrets in return for money. It'll come out. You'll see. Well, they already proved that seven point eight seven point eight that they million. can find that they can find that they can find exactly. <laughs> I bet it's a lot more than that. Plus, he owes the Bank of China money, so we shall see. But it's, oh, but please don't have your food, don't have your medication, but send that money to me. I'm a billionaire. And people would do it, too. I know. Um, he's not going to get immunity in the Georgia case either, by the way. Uh, so. Oh, no, it's all going it's, it's, it's to fall into place. All right. Oh, I forgot. If they want to get a hold of you, how did they do it? <laughs> Rodeo Drive Sandwich Board Reach for Food. <laughs> <laughs> Ten cents a dance. 
exactly and you can FedEx and if you want you can FedEx me that steak um no <laughs> no send it to Trump no that's the rump oh there you go oh, the rump to, roast send the rump to the rump um basically check on it's Arthur ease your mind a r t h u r ease e a s e your y o u r mind m i n d here on YouTube. And our and just ArthurEaseYourMind.com is my and website. And, and if you need to call me, 310-494-5955. Repeat that again. 310-494-5955. You have to use your computer voice. 310 3-1-0-4-9-4-5-9-5-5. Yeah, I'll, 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 for next time, I'll have Siri say it. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I have a male voice for Siri. Again, three, one, zero, four, nine, four, five, nine, five, five. Arthur, ease your mind dot com. Go to his uh, YouTube channel. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank if you, you like this, thumbs up. Subscribe. Right below. That's all you got to do. Hit that button. I did a show once and said, come on, you can subscribe. I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I like that. I'm looking. <laughs> That's it. You can do it. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> all right. So we've got some questions. Let me get them out here. And you yep. always talk. Thank you, Mel. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for being on the show. We're going to do this regularly now. Yeah. I have no why. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Make me feel real good. <laughs> All well, right. it's usually me and my sock puppet, so that's about it. Oh, Marilyn Monroe. We have a Marilyn Monroe on here, y'all. Okay. Marilyn says, my sweet 90-year-old mama, who oh. doesn't hate anyone except Trump and his cronies, despises Steve Bannon. Do you see him convicted in jail? If so, can you tell when? Well, I always get a yes on it. By the way, Marilyn, your mama's a really wise woman. Tell her we said. She aged like a good wine. <laughs> She's very wise. She doesn't like Trump. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what do you think about Bannon? I always felt, you know, if he hadn't been pardoned, everything would have been fine. But he's going to jail. You know, he'd be... And, there's a lot of fraud, a lot of just, I think it was what, uh, Roger Stone had asked him to do away with uh, Eric Swal Swalwell and, and Nader. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a pretty picture. What do you think? Well, I've said all along when Trump pardoned him, you know, when he was arrested because he took money to put up a wall and it was you use it for other stuff. I wonder if he uh, declared that for taxes. Um, I said all along that at some point, you know, even when Trump pardoned him, that he was going to <clears throat> end up being indicted for other stuff and going to the pokey. Uh, and so I still hold by that. Uh, and I love the fact they took him, when they first arrested him, he was on like a billionaire's yacht. <laughs> Yeah, this oh. is the man, this is the man of the people. Oh yeah, right. Um, you know, and that grim, that smug grimace. Yeah, because he knew when he was arrested, he already knew he was going to get pardoned from Trump. You mm -hmm. know, but I see him at some point. There's going to be people that will come forward to spill the beans on him about other stuff he's pulled. Mm -hmm. And I think as we speak, he's still being looked at behind the scenes. You know, there's investigations going on there, and I see him indicted and i see him incarcerated at some point the same as i do with roger stone and flynn mm -hmm. that hasn't changed either no you know when trump pardoned them we got some flack that oh well you guys said he they'd be in jail and i said yeah well the opera's not over until the you know till the big lady sings and so here we are you know until the fat lady sings no i don't want to say fat. that's not nice <laughs> anyway zoftic <laughs> all right Okay. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. 
pick Oliveira says. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Love from the UK. Hey, UK, hey. how are you? Um, will Rishi Sunak be the prime minister much longer? <laughs> hmm. um, UK is such a fantastic country. Yes, it is. Uh, but has been ruled by clowns, Boris Trust, and now Suniak. Thank you. Well, you know, America is a wonderful country, and we're being ruled. We were ruled by um, somebody who's a wannabe insurrectionist dictator, um, Donald Trump. I so say Bozo, but that gives Bozo a bad name. I know. <laughs> so, what do you think about um, Sumac? I know it's Sunak. But there's a poison sumac. Yes. So what do you think about sumac? <laughs> I don't know how long their terms last. I mean, but I feel this is the only one he has. When he became prime minister, I said, you know, he's going to go down the same path as the rest of them. He's a one-time deal. In fact, I see more liberals coming to the government in um in the in the UK. I really do. Mm -hmm. So um um, I don't see him as prime minister for a long time. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Uh, the next prime minister, I think, is more liberal, more for the people, and would not be, certainly be like, you know, um, fancy-haired Boris. <laughs> um, or fancy-haired Like a Batcher. joke. And, and the sumac will be gone, too. Yeah. Um, all right. Wonder how the new prime minister after Sumac will get along with the king. I think they'll get along quite well. I get fine. I get fine. I still it's hard to say the king because I don't think, you know. I was going to say William's going to do a great job. Exactly. Thank you. I I don't wish Charles harm, but I just don't see him king long. You know, he's not going to live as long as his mother. No. Uh, so I don't know. At some point, I see him stepping down, but Charles will be amazing. Did you see the new prime minister that the French elected? Macron? No, prime minister. He's the president. The prime oh, minister. No. First open gay man. Oh, yay. What's his name? Marie? <laughs> yeah, Chevalier. <laughs> we I'm can not say sure. this. We can we were gay. We can do this. I just I just read headlines. I didn't read the details. <laughs> I gotta look and see. Okay. I wonder if he's single. I'll call him up. Hi, I got a date for you. <laughs> His name's Arthur. Maker, maker. He's in Los Angeles. <laughs> All right. You better learn French. Uh, oh, okay. très bien. <laughs> I, I don't speak. I speak Spanish and understand. My it father is French Canadian. Oh, well, in that case. Okay. But I speak the French I speak is like the French Canadian, the old fashioned French. Oh, they'd understand. Mon, all I know is mon dieu. Okay. Uh, it's cool to be kind. Yes, it is cool to be kind. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Great Hi, time. Mel and Arthur. Will Ron DeSantis ever force Bridget uh, Ziegler to resign from both the Disney board and the Sarasota school board? School board? She's also a Moms of Liberty co-founder, and DeSantis is the only one that can force her to step down. She refuses to resign from either board, despite the fact that her husband has been accused of rape and they've both been having, well, never mind. Um, um, they've been committing no-nos while uh, campaigning against the LBT, LGBT community. So they say the hypocrisy is astounding. So I guess there's three questions here. I think her, uh, I think, it, no, it's not Ziegler, it's Ziegler. Will mm -hmm. Bridget Ziegler uh, be forced to resign from Disney and Sarasota School Board? I hear yes from Disney yes. and Sarasota. Well, they, they made Christian go, her husband. Right. He's gone. Okay. So I take it that's a yes, right? Yes. Okay. She's also Moms of Liberty co-founder and the Satan is the only one that can force her to step down. She refuses to resign from that board either, despite despite the fact of what her husband and herself were accused of. So do you see her off that board? Yes. So do I. Yeah. Um, let me see. 
you know, I see both of them under investigation and I see indictments coming there too. I know that sounds disingenuous for me to say everybody's being indicted. Yeah, but I feel something about financial wrongdoings. Well, but also because of um, I don't want to I don't want to go to YouTube jail, but they were accused of some pretty serious sexual things. And so um Yeah, instead of family values, it was the Manson family values. Well, well right. Um hmm. so I don't know. I see criminal charges against both of them. Hmm. I mean, I'm talking felony charges. So I think it's pronounced Ziegler in German. In German, it'd be Ziegler. But I get my eyes and E's mixed up. I'm dyslexic, so don't worry about it. There you go. Okay. Charmin804 says, Hi, Mel and Arthur. Happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year to you, too. Here in Cuyahoga County in Ohio, oh, my husband's aunt used to live in Cuyahoga uh, County, right, on, by, right by the forest there. It's beautiful there, by the way. Very hilly and beautiful. Here in Cuyahoga County in Ohio, we will be voting on the county prosecutor this November. The incumbent is being challenged by a promising challenger. Do you see the outcome? Thank you. I hear the challenger, the promising challenger, will, will win. That's what I pick up. I got the same thing. Yay. Um, so and I don't pull cards that much, but I did pull a card on that using the Lenormand deck, and it's all Destiny. What deck is that? Lenormand. Spell? With an L? <laughs> like, Lenormand. It's it's the French deck. She was she was a uh, reader in Paris for Josephine. And she told Napoleon not to go to Waterloo. Ooh. And see what happens when you don't listen to your psychic? <laughs> I should have listened. Yeah. Now, what's the name of the deck again? Leonard Mond. Spell, just spell the whole thing. Like Leonard Mond. Leonard M-A-N-D. Okay. I've never heard of that deck. Is yeah. it like a tarot deck? No, dude, it's little pictures, little like little oracle cards. And oh. Oh, Mond. I like that. Is it written in French or English? Um the story behind that. These little sayings were not from her original deck. When in the 70s, a guy named Stuart Kaplan owned U.S. Games, wrote these little sayings, which he felt meant for the cards. I was doing a reading once for someone, and she said, well, that's not what the card says. I said, excuse me? She said, well, that's, read that. I said, oh, God. So this deck is in German, and I have two others in French. So if ever I... <laughs> anybody sees them they don't they can't correct me but those are made up by not lenormand oh let, let me uh, when we're done let me know where you got the german deck or where you get the decks that'd be cool <laughs> yeah, the, actually the house of lenormand she's a, she's a really good reader okay yeah all right um Irene Chavez says, hi, Mel and Arthur. Hi, Irene. Hi, Irene. Question, what is the deal with Lloyd Austin being hospitalized and President Biden not knowing about it until four days later? That wasn't a big secret. You know, sometimes people go in the hospital, Biden's busy. This guy probably said, you know, if it's something that's not that, that huge and maybe just didn't want to, I think Biden knew about it. But I think that uh, probably Lloyd asked him not to say anything right. until they had a diagnosis. And yeah, I he, think that's what that was about. His prostate cancer. And you, he's just trying to keep it quiet, which right. is his right. And as you know, as a former cancer survivor, you know, oral pharyngeal, when I first found out, you know, I didn't want to come public with it either until I found out. I mean, I knew it might be, but you know, when I found out it was for real, that's when we talked about it. So I understand, I understand where uh, Mr. Austin's coming from. And I do think Biden knew, maybe not for a day or more, but, you know, I think when Austin went in the hospital, he probably figured maybe it's, you know, some kind of infection or something, we'll see what's going on. And I think at some point before that, doctors probably thought it was and said, let's just put him in for testing. 
And there you have it. So I don't think it was any conspiracy. It was no big cover up. It wasn't anything like that. I just think that they were respecting the guy's privacy. (laughs) Just because he's got prostate cancer doesn't mean that he won't do a good job. (laughs) Right. Right. All right. By the way, I have a question for you about Trump's health. A lot of people are asking about that, and he really does look terrible. I think all this is taking its toll on him. Even though he's loving the attention, it's really it's really wearing on him. Well, I've always said from day one, he doesn't cross the finish line, whatever way you want to read that. Right. Even if he were on the ticket, I still don't see him crossing the finish line with the ticket. I feel somebody else may come in. Okay. I feel in May is what I've been reading that things start going downhill for him. And it's it's going to be more and more noticeable as we get around March 4th. He's going to be a basket case. And, you know, first he's doing the nursery rhyme, you know, the emperor's new clothes. Then he's going to end up doing Humpty Dumpty. That's what I always call him, Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's all the men. men couldn't. Fit all, the, all the Trump's horses and all the Trump's men couldn't put Donnie back together again. <laughs> Marty Taylor Green and Mike Johnson couldn't get. <laughs> okay, um, so now, I don't wish anybody. I don't anything. wish him harm. No, I don't wish him no. harm, but. Um, but also the dementia is starting. I mean, him leaning forward the way he does, then putting sandbags under the, his toes so he doesn't tip over. It's scary. It's a type of dementia. Sandbags under his toes? Yeah, and when he's doing those like viral vitriol videos, he, he's, they have right in front of him, his toes are on, on sandbags. So he doesn't tip over. Well, the way he talks, it's so disjointed. And I mean, some of the stuff he comes up with is like, why did he pick that? And it's one lie after the other, after the other. And it's sad because people don't know better and they believe him. Well, when do you know that Trump is lying? He opens his mouth. (laughs) Do they really believe that's a picture of him with the Rambo body? Yeah, right. I don't think so. He's got more sags than, um, <clears throat> never mind. He's going to look like Bib the Michelin Tire Man. <laughs> no, Michelin Tire Man looks great. compared. Yeah, to yeah, really. Okay. Jenny uh, Thormalen says, Scalise, who voted against funding stem cell research, has now pushed his, his fat butt uh, yep. To the front of the line to receive stem cell therapy. Isn't that what we call karma? Isn't that what we call hypocrisy? I feel like church lady. <laughs> Isn't that special? It's special. <laughs> anyway, let me read that again. Scalise, <clears throat> who has voted against funding stem cell research has now pushed his fat butt to the front of the line to receive stem cell therapy. Is he having second thoughts about not supporting stem cell research funding? Absolutely not. He's like, I didn't have to support it, but it's there now. I want it and I want the treatment. Yeah. Because it's all about them. If When it comes to them, if it's something that helps them, they're all for it. If it's going to help other, if it's going to help somebody else, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> well, actually, if it's, if they're against it, but it can help them. They go get it Correct. secretly. But we're right. still against it, right? Yeah. Well, it's like all these people that voted down the, um, you know, the package about building all the bridges and all that kind of stuff. And now they're the ones for the rollout parades. Oh, look what we did. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody, a reporter called somebody on that. He was, I forget how it was. It was some politician look at everything we did with this act and da, da, da. And somebody said to the politician, but you voted against it. And he didn't know what to say. Put it on the record. You know, nowadays what you put out on the internet stays for perpetuity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
And you better be able to back it up because somebody's going to call you on it. <laughs> yep. All right. Hello, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Jitterbug22. Hi, Jitterbug. I love that name. Uh, will the law change for people in the government who break the Stock Act? If they get caught, it's only a $250 penalty. So, of course, they're going to trade and make thousands of dollars with a minimum penalty. Thank you for these shows. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank you, Jitterbug. I see that law changing where if they have that inside information that they cannot engage in that sort of trading while they while they own um, while they hold an oh. election spot. And if they do, um oh what is it when when you um I forget Insider what you're trading. Called. I'm sorry. Insider, Insider trading. trading. Yeah. I, I think there will be laws passed against the people in the House and the Senate doing insider trading. Yeah. I mean, look at what they did to Martha Stewart. And look at what these guys are doing. <laughs> and woman. At least she did it with style. I'm sorry? At least she did it with style. You should make great pot roast. <laughs> All right. Um, Stormy's Schumacher says... Secretary of State Jenna Griswold certifies 2024 Colorado presidential primary election ballot, Denver, Colorado. It says, today, Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold certified the statewide Republican and Democratic ballots for the 2024 presidential primary election. Secretary Griswold said, Colorado's 2024 presidential primary ballot is certified. The United States Supreme Court has accepted the case and Donald Trump will appear on the ballot as a result. I don't understand if that's a comment or what that's about. Basically, even though the court said he should not be on the ballot, she certified it because there's a stay on it and it's before the Supreme Court until they decide what the answer is. Well, and it's for the primary. It's not for it's for the primary. It's not for the election. Oh, I see. I see. But at first she wasn't going to certify it, but she probably had to now because it's, she can't do anything until the court decides. Her hands are tied. But again, this is for the primary. Right. But she followed the law. Yes. But wasn't Colorado the first to want to remove his name? Yes. And then a couple other states followed suit. Then Maine followed suit. The Secretary then, of State there. And then one more, I think, did or wants to or something. I'm not, I know California was trying. Because but, I see a couple more states following suit. But the thing is, when the Supreme Court rules on that, that hearing, I believe, is February 8th, around there. Right. But but for her certifying his name on the ballot, what if the Supreme Court says that the state has the right to take the name off the ballot, which they won't do? But I wonder what would happen then if she could take it back off again. <laughs> well... Again, this is for the primary. No, I get that. The national election. Right. But if. His, they can take his name off the national election. But then they would still have to have a candidate. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I know she I was. Have enough, I don't have enough water in my magic eight ball to figure that one out. I don't either. But I, but I, I think the reason she did it was because. All the law. Right. Because it's going to the court. I, I think the Supreme Court should have heard it sooner, but I well, think they delayed hearing it for a reason as well. I still feel they don't want to hear it, and they're going to try and kick the, off the Congress. Um, hmm. I'm sure they'll they'll find something to sidestep it. But but the only scary part about that is is to say, okay, we took his name off because of the you know because of the insurrection. But yet the Republicans are already saying, well, we're going to take Biden's name off too in certain states. So where yeah, but they have no proof of no, I, I get that. I understand all that. It, it's all uh, lip services. Again, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all I getting get, crazy. I understand that too. But I think what I see coming out of all of this is there's going to be states that will change their constitutions to say that if a president is like breaking the 14th Amendment or whatever, whatever, whatever then we, and we have proof of that, which they do, then we can, we have the right to take the name off the ballot. I agree with that. So do I. I mean, 
I just said it. No, I'm agreeing with your prediction. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought you meant with the decision. <laughs> um, sorry. Duh. The dog, the dog wants me it's to okay. the dog. Um that's a smart one. I mean, that's a that's a way around it for the court to kick it back to Congress, but um they'll find a way around it. But what I said on the recent show, whether he's on the ballot or off the ballot, he's not winning. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people are nervous about what if he does. Well, I don't see him crossing the finish line. Good. I often feel at the last minute Nikki Haley gets in there and she still loses to Biden. Oh, you think it'll be Haley the last mm -hmm. minute? Okay. Or my liver was backing up from the 70s and I just saw hit, saw things. I don't know. So she's saying that because his name, the Supreme Court took the case that he, he's going to be on the ballot. Had they not taken the case, she could have kept it off. But So she's Correct. following the law. I got Correct. it. Well, she did it lawfully, then good. I mean... Um, okay, Plebanov. Hello, Mel and Arthur. The war between Israel and Palestine has left thousands of people dead. People are calling for a ceasefire. Will Pope Francis be able to negotiate a ceasefire and peace at a later time? I think Pope Francis is probably talking to Netanyahu about stopping it. I mean, what Hamas did was terrible to attack Israel. We all know that Russia and, Russia and Iran was behind it. But yet Netanyahu is keeping this going on. This He could have ended this weeks ago, but he's keeping it going on because he wants to take attention away from himself because, you know, it's a diversion because he was being looked at, you know, because of the, because of the crap he pulled <laughs> that right. was illegal. So that's why he's keeping this war going. <laughs> Well, what I've been predicting is a ceasefire at the end of the month in the, the first week of February. Um, I mean, that's what I got when uh, I pulled on. This is clearly something political on the part of Netanyahu to keep it going. Yes. Come on, give it up already. You know, it's genocide is genocide no matter who commits it. And mm -hmm. it's not right. <laughs> and I'm pro-Israel, but I can't be pro-Netanyahu. Not at all. There's a difference. There is a difference. <clears throat> okay. Maddie says, hello, Arthur and Mel. I feel like I knew my husband another past life, and he feels the same. We are so in tune with each other. Can your guys let me know if that's true? Well, we're not really doing personal questions tonight, but I'll go ahead and answer it. The answer is it is true. You probably knew each other in many, many past lives. <laughs> oh, I was going to say they met on the mothership. <laughs> but... My husband's it's says, amazing when you see somebody and you know, but a lot of times I've had clients that get confused because you meet somebody from another lifetime. That doesn't mean you're together in this one. It just means you were in another one. And so then they go down the rabbit hole. Right. But then there's the ones like these two that, yes, they've been together many, many times. They have Man. a soul contract. Um. My husband probably going, I want to get rid of him in this one. <laughs> Here's a contract. It's called divorce. There's a contract. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, the divorce ends the contract. The yeah. No one's yeah. Then well, it is a contract too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no one void. <laughs> yeah, right. Done. R D I V O R C E. <laughs> and okay. first it was divorce court. Now it's going to be gay divorce court. <laughs> Well, I has said when, you know, before they passed, the Supreme Court said that gay people could get married. Thank God it happened during that window, because mm. otherwise we would have still been like, uh -uh. but um, I said, then I should go to law school and specialize in gay divorce because if the divorce rates among LGBTQ is the same as it is among straight people, then I'd make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Anyway, roll card says, hi, guys. When will we see the end of Fox News? <laughs> I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon, but I see a lot more lawsuits filed against some big lawsuits that the people filing lawsuits are going to win. And so... Also, as Trump dissipates, 
Yes, that's you're right. not going to be catering to his people as right. much. What is the new name of Twitter? Um, X. Well, when when Elon Musk took over Twitter, and it became X, I, even before it came X, I said it's going to tank. It's going to go down the tubes, and that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I originally didn't see him getting it, but then at the last minute he did. So. I didn't think getting it either, but he did. But I don't think it's doing very well, right? I think it's no, a problem. No. Um, it's like looking at the picture of the Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> like, <laughs> crash and burn. Okay. The Sokogo says, can you read on Roger Stone? Will he go to jail? Does the Pope live in the Vatican? <laughs> Is the Pope Catholic? Exactly. Well, the, never mind. Well, actually, the Pope doesn't live in the Vatican. He's got his own apartment outside of the right. little part. Yeah, right. But you get the drift. Right. Um, but I do think this Pope is behind the scenes working to try to bring about a ceasefire mm -hmm. to the whole Gaza thing. So. He is a peacemaker. I mean, this Pope. At a time when they asked him about on the plane, the reporter said something about gay people, and he said, Who am I to judge? Well, he opened the door to priest blessing gay people, which is huge. Yeah, not George, marriage, but just blessing. You know, my psychic light bulb just went on. I'm very, very concerned about Pope Francis's health. I really am. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'm thinking that he's not in great health. Um, that's what I pick up. And I don't think he's going to be Pope for, a, I mean, for a, a lot longer. Uh, because I see some white smoke at the Vatican again, which would mean the election of another pope. Right. Uh, but the next pope, I don't think is going to be conservative. I think it would really be a pope once again for the people. And that would pull people together. And at some point, I thought it would be under this pope, but I think I was wrong on that. But I see a third Vatican Council being called. So like the second Vatican, Vatican Council reformed the church, I see a third Vatican Council being called that will really reform the church even more and at some point or even women can go into the clergy and where priests can get married uh and i think we'll see that in our lifetime <laughs> well so you heard it here first you all <laughs> i know it sounds way out there but no it's not really because he's been trying to do a lot of reforms behind the scenes right it's so, almost like he's trying to go yep if he was a comedian, he'd be in Tahoe checking out his jokes before he went to Vegas. There you go. So what about checking Roger Stone? Room. What do you think? Jail? Well, yes. Roger Stone? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is, is Pope Catholic? <laughs> All right. No, he's Protestant. All right. Susan Strickland says, Josh Howley was taking credit in an ad for reduced drug prices. <laughs> I would like to know if Lucas Coons will beat him in the Senate race. Yes. 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 We both took perverse pleasure in that, didn't we? Yes. Well, I forget whose show it was, but they were they were asking about him, talking about him running. And I said, when he was running down the hallway from his own people, all he needed was saddle shoes and, and little pigtails. <laughs> Hula hoops. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a little plaid <laughs> uniform. I mean, he just was like skipping. <laughs> oh, my God. Entertainment purposes only, people. Yes, entertainment purposes only. Josh took credit for it. All right. Yeah, right. Okay. You know, but these politicians take credits for That's stuff. what we were just talking about. No, it's like, and they didn't, and then when they're called on, they're like, oh, okay. Uh, and I can't. And, it's like little kids in the playground. Nah, -uh. right. <laughs> but you vote. Nah, -uh. a n n e l w, uh, uh, an l w says, "Hello, you two. Hi. Will the calls? Will any of the call sending SWAT teams to Trump's targets be successful in hurting anyone? Are the calls domestic or foreign?" Um. I don't know what they're sending SWAT teams to Trump's tar to what oh it was like remember on Christmas Day when Marty Taylor Green's house got swatted for the eighth time where all the SWAT teams show up. 
Oh, I got you. Well, and they did that, because and they did that with it. Judge Chutkin, I think, last week. They did what? I'm sorry. They did the same thing with to Judge Chutkin. So what are they doing? Calling SWAT teams to go to the people's Call, house? Calling and saying there's all this stuff happening, and you know they're on high alert anyway when it comes to someone like that. So they go. And nothing's running. going on when they get to their house. Mm -mm. Well, they're going to find. I think they're going to really uh, start figuring out who's making these calls and really, really harsh punishments for people who make false calls like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I see, I mean, that's going to end real soon. Um, they may be calling from a burner phone, but believe me, they got technology. Oh, they're going to be able to trace the burner phones, of course. Um, unfortunately, with Trump calling out people like working in the court and stuff like that, There'll be threats against some of them. And I see at least, I hope I'm wrong, but one or two people getting injured. And that's going to really, really spur the court to say, wait a minute here. Enough's enough. And if they're injured because of what Trump did, they're going to try to hold him responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he just needs to shut his mouth. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's see. Laura Wright. Michael Roman, one of Donald Trump's co-defendants in the Georgia election interference case, is making an allegation against Fawny Willis. He says she has an ongoing romantic relationship with Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor she hired to work on this case. He has asked for the charges against him to be thrown out and for Willis to be dismissed. What will happen? It's like him wanting the judge dismissed because he contributed fifteen dollars. It's, it's both. Remember, Trump was saying that Fonny Willis was having all these affairs with all these like thugs. Right. Well, here again, Donald Trump accuses people of things he's doing. I wonder how many affairs he's had. We'll find out with Stormy Daniels, won't we? <laughs> mm. Why do I see a can of Campbell soup mushroom? Never mind. <laughs> Um, you know what, Laura, that's a great question. Uh, the charges against him are not going to be thrown out in Georgia. Hmm. Even hmm. if she was dating Nathan Wade, what does that mean? It doesn't mean they're working together against Trump and she brought him in. It, it, no. you, it's mixing apples and oranges. So there's no conflict of interest there for sure. And he's not. I mean, it's terrible how he tries to assassinate people's character, make them think that there's something bad going on when there really isn't. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, buckle up your seats. It's going to get crazy. All right. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Happy New Year and much love to you both. Oh, thank hey, you. This is a good one. Will Citizens United ever be overturned? Will big money be taken out of taken out of our politics soon? There's two questions there. Go ahead. I'll let you answer them. Yes. 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 For what? <laughs> and yes. Oh, two yeses. Okay. Well, it's not right away, but as I've been predicting, there'll be more Supreme Court justices, and when that happens, Citizens United goes away. There's going to be a lot coming out about Citizens United and some of the crap they pulled behind the mm -hmm. scenes, and um. I think it's going to be a thing in the future where these large corporations can no longer make these humongous donations to politicians because big companies really try to buy the election. I see an input. I see that ending soon. Yes. All right. Um, I think this is our last one. So, yay. Especially when that uh, yay, check doesn't... <laughs> we got them all. No, especially when that check doesn't clear from the Cayman Islands. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Let's see. Sheila, be a critical thinker, says, Hi, Auntie Mel and Arthur. With people like Jim Jord Jordan making a mockery of our justice system, he certainly does, will any of those Congress people that helped plan and act or took part in the J6 insurrection ever get indicted and prosecuted? Yes. I feel after the first quarter, names are going to start coming out. Yep. Big time. <laughs> now, when I was meditating on this whole thing a couple of days ago, and I was looking at Mike Johnson, 
they kept on showing me a kabuki theater. I'm saying they, kept, they kept on showing me a kabuki theater where all these people are dressed in black, making everything move around. But then someone turns the lights on and you see all these people holding up the puppets. <laughs> so that's the way I look at this. I like that. So interpret that. Someone's turning the light on and people are going to be seen for what they really did. Before they can crawl back into the woodwork. Right. But then there's raid. Well, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It just makes them run. <laughs> well, good. There you go. Okay. Once again, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they do it? Arthur Ease Your Mind here on YouTube. Arthur Ease Your Mind.com. And in Mel's computer voice, 310-494-5955. But it is zero, not O. Oh. Oh, three one zero. Sorry. <laughs> like I told you last time, it's a Malibu number, but I projected one day I live in Malibu. It took me thirty years just to get the phone number. So, <laughs> hey, well, then maybe one of these days you'll end up in Malibu. All right, it's been a pleasure. Uh, your show next week. We'll see. I have jury. I may have jury duty. I will, you know, but definitely the following week. Just simply say they did it. I'm a psychic. I know it. You're good. I know. Usually they don't, they don't like psychics on juries or anything. So. I'm, I told you last time, yes, they put me in the jury. Well, they did? Yeah, they know a psychic, they know everything. And I was juror number 11. Wow. And it was a murder trial. And I'm thinking, do I tell the judge the guy that killed, he killed, tell me how he did it? But at the very last minute with Verdure, I was like, we don't want him. Well, so that... he replaced me at the very last minute. But I was ready to not that I I'm trying to get out of jury duty. It's just that this was going to be like a two month trial. And when you work for yourself, that's, that's pretty hard. I'd like to be on a jury actually, but not for two months. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it because I work for myself. <laughs> exactly. All right. So anyway, we'll do this again soon. How's that? Yes, definitely. Right. Thank uh, you. And thank uh, I've enjoyed this. And so um... I love giggling with you. You're fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's fun yeah you know it takes a it take i like shows where we can laugh and let it out and well where we can laugh <laughs> um yeah like my plan last week <laughs> um you know i think with a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming out and it's going to be a wild ride people are going to be fearful i think it's good to laugh yeah you know, and we're going to need a lot of laughs this year i promise you all but we'll get through it our democracy will survive, and my guides tell me justice will be served. And we'll do a poll. If the next show we do, we should be sucking helium before we answer the questions. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Hello. We'll sound like Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> All right. On that note. <laughs> Just a thought. All righty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. Love you. All right.